It's beyond a flex. Walking into combat with a sword that has a gold hilt and an electric eel skin for a sheath? Like, come on, that's drip on a whole new level. What's up guys, it's the old ninja wearing a weird design super row hat and welcome to the modern ninja Specifically welcome to black history month here on my channel This is the first of several themed weeks coming on the channel in the near future So, you know subscribe and maybe drop a like so it helps out for the algorithm. That would be super helpful But let's get started. The Acropina is an Ashanti sword originally meant for warfare Like straight up killing people. For those of you that don't know, the Ashanti are a people that are part of the Akan ethnic group Native to the Ashanti region, basically part of modern day Ghana. Now in modern times, the sword is generally used for ceremony reasons and during a, a special festival, specifically the Akwasa Day Festival, and I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. It's an Ashanti celebration that the people have once every six weeks on a Sunday. But that doesn't mean this doesn't get brought up for other reasons as well. In fact, the use of the Akafina blade is considered a martial art in and of itself, often utilizing the sword alongside other weapons like knives or other improvised weapons. The art also utilizes non-bladed techniques like hand-to-hand -hand combat, joint locks, weapon disarming, and grappling techniques. This makes this style very well-rounded and balanced, being able to cover multiple different styles of combat all at once and fairly well. Those main styles of combat being stand-up combat, ground combat, and weapon combat. This makes the warriors of this art an absolute force to be reckoned with. Even, now, even though it's mostly used ceremonial today, the style and the sword is even still used in actual wars to this day. Now, they also have a firearm, right? They're not just going out with their sword, but it's still used. And it's also, of course, used as a combat sport. In fact, it's actually the national sport of the Ashanti region. The sword has three parts to it. The blade, the hilt, and the sheath. The blade is typically made out of iron, although copper has also been used, and in modern times, steel has been used in some cases, but it's still just traditionally iron. Oh, traditionally, I can't say words today, guys. The hilt is usually handcrafted wood with patterns carved into it, although more expensive swords can be made with iron or even gold hilts still with those special patterns carved into it. Because if you have enough drip to have a sword with a gold hilt, you deserve that sword with a gold hilt. I respect it. I broke my glasses. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> and the sheath can be made out of various hides. Obviously leather, like, you know, traditional cow hide, or even leopard hide, and even electric eel skin. Let me say it again for those in the back. Electric eel skin, which is like super dope. I'm not gonna lie. If I could have that, I would. Like just sheathing your sword into the body of an electric eel. <sighs> Here. Does that make me weird? I feel like it might make me weird. Let me know in the comments if this is just me and you wouldn't want an electric eel sheet. And this sword has stood quite the test of time, being able to use by the Ashanti during wars since the 17th century. And like I said earlier, still carried to this day. Again, for mostly self-defense if they run out of ammunition or get disarmed, but they still carry it. And for a weapon from the 1600s that still is applicable today, that's pretty impressive. But let me know for yourself. Do you think the Acrophina sword is cool? If you do, would you want one? And if you do, uh, tell me where to find one. But <laughs> with all that said, my name is DJ Moore. This is The Modern Ninja, and I'm out. If you like this video, check out this other Black History Week video that you might like as well. Regardless of which one you pick, I'll see you guys in the next one.